Pictures of modern wars are significantly different from those that we are used to seeing in historical films and television programs. Sure, massive infantry attacks under the shelter of tanks and artillery are still necessary for military operations, but most modern armies are trying to use as many weapons as possible that can be controlled remotely and cause maximum damage to the enemy without endangering people's lives. One example of such weapons is the Bayraktar TB2 Turkish drones. The Ukrainian military successfully uses them to destroy columns of Russian military equipment, 9K-37 Buck missile systems, columns with fuel, and much more. More about the frightening Turkish drones, watch in our video. Myraktar TB-2 is a medium-altitude, highly autonomous, unmanned aerial vehicle belonging to the male, medium-altitude, long-endurance class. The drones were created thanks to the U.S. embargo on the supply of unmanned vehicles to Turkey, which was introduced due to fears that they could be used to fight the Kurds. Since the Turks were unable to obtain this type of weapon, they focused on creating it themselves. The breakthrough was the project of Selçuk Bayraktar, a master's degree holder from the University of Pennsylvania and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, as well as an expert in the development of unmanned aerial vehicles. Upon his return to the country, he turned his own auto parts, Bayraktar Makina Company, into a defense company. His work has received national recognition and, after 2020, international recognition. Bayraktar is a relatively young unmanned vehicle. Its first test flight took place in May 2014. It began service with the Turkish Army in 2015. In addition to Ukraine, Azerbaijan has Turkish UAVs. Several vehicles are in service in Libya, Qatar, and Morocco. Bayraktar TB2 is designed to operate at a maximum control range of up to 150 kilometers. This is a combat reconnaissance drone, so it can be used both for reconnaissance and for the destruction of specific targets. It is equipped with modular electron optical as well as infrared cameras, laser rangefinders, and target designators, which are necessary for ammunition control and the multifunctional ABMDA field array radar, or AFAR. In addition, a transportable electronic warfare module, TEWM, can be installed on the device to neutralize old air defense systems. All equipment have an independent power source. The ground crew of the drone consists of three people, commander, pilot, and operator. When Bayraktar is on a combat mission, they are at the control station, which is transported in a van mounted on the chassis of a heavy truck. One of these ground teams is capable of controlling three UAVs simultaneously. The drone itself is equipped with software that constantly determines its exact coordinates and calculates the most optimal options for drone routes when performing a task. Bayraktar TB2 operates as a system consisting of six drones via which the operator sees targets and directs high-precision projectiles in real time, and of the cameras with the help of which spectacular videos of the results of work are recorded, two ground control stations, three ground data terminals, two remote video terminals, and ground support equipment. A significant part of the drone's structural elements is made of composite materials which have recently been actively used in the aviation industry due to their low weight, ease of molding, and resistance to high temperatures resulting from air resistance. Nevertheless, the Bayraktar TB2 is not that fast. The drive system consists of a single Rotax 912 IS engine with a total capacity of 100 horsepower, allowing the construction to accelerate to 220 km per hour. But the mentioned engine is a piston unit and not a jet, as in the case with fighter aircraft or modern passenger aircraft. The wingspan of the drone is 12 meters and its length is 6.5 meters. Therefore, this is a fairly large structure weighing 650 kilograms. The tank holds about 300 liters of fuel. The payload of Bayraktar TB2 is 150 kilograms, of which 55 is the electro-optical targeting and reconnaissance system. 95 kilograms remain for the combat load. It can be an anti-tank missile with a range of 8 kilometers, a high-precision, high-explosive fragmentation aerial bomb, or an armor-piercing projectile. Battle gear may include anti-tank guided missiles and light circulating ammunition. The main type of Bayraktar TB2 weapons are universal air-to-air -air guided missiles of the MAM system, 
which can be used against ground targets. They are capable of engaging targets at a distance of up to 8 or 14 kilometers using an inertial gravitational navigation system. What is more, interchangeable heads can be used. This is a fragmentation explosive thermobaric or tandem cumulative attachment. The drone can also be armed with MAM-C missiles with a combat universal part capable of penetrating the tank's 200 mm thick steel armor. The maximum firing range using Bayraktar TB2 devices is 15 kilometers, which allows operators to effectively hit targets without being detected, especially if the belligerent party does not expect an attack or does not have electronic systems for detecting unmanned aerial vehicles. Bayraktar TB2 drones have proven to be a very effective tool for destroying enemy vehicles. During the hostilities in Nagorno-Karabakh, they were a horror for the Armenians. On the account of Bayraktars in Karabakh are 88 tanks, 34 armored vehicles, 137 conventional towed howitzers, 17 self-propelled guns, 61 MLRS, 21 anti-aircraft missile systems of air superiority, Osa Strela-10 and Tor M2KM, two S-300 missile systems, six air defense radars, two Army operational tactical missile systems, Elbrus, and 185 trucks as well as cars. Own losses to Bayraktars In Ukraine, the baptism of fire of Turkish drones took place on October 26, 2021, during the destruction of the posts with an artillery of the so-called DPR separatists near the village of Ranitne. The separatists fired on the Ukrainian side with prohibited 122mm howitzers, but thanks to the drone, all positions were eliminated. After the Russian invasion on February 24, 2022, the confirmed military victories of the Bayraktars amounted to several hundred various military equipment, which was supposed to destroy Ukrainians and their cities. What do you think? Will traditional patterns of warfare remain in the future? Or will all combat actions take place between drones, robots, and artificial intelligence? Please answer in the comments and take care.